We're going to talk about the state pension. The state pension has been in the news quite a bit over the last three to four weeks because there is this real contentious debate about whether or not the government is going to uphold the triple lock. So the triple lock on the state pension is essentially this promise that those who receive state pension right now will see their pension payments via the state increase by wage growth, consumer price index, which is essentially inflation, or 2.5%, whichever of those is higher. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news, the CPI, or inflation number, as of the time of recording this video, is 10.1%. So you can see it's quite a big increase for the government to, to give. And fundamentally, the government also has to find money to fund this as well. But I want to talk about the state pension from a more cynical point of view. For years now, there's been this swirling rumor that state pension is ultimately going to get scrapped in the future. And that may not necessarily impact those of people who are maybe watching this video if you're already in receipt of state pension. But if you're in your 40s like I am, or certainly if you're younger, this could be a big, big point of contention because ultimately this is a this is an issue that needs to be addressed. And so we're going to talk about four things. We're going to be talking about how the state pension works, first and foremost. We're going to be talking about the cost of the state pension to the government. We're going to be talking about some foreshadowing. Certain things have changed over the last 10 years, which have meant the government has tried to introduce measures to ensure that people aren't relying on the state pension for their retirement. And then we're going to be talking about radical thinking, because I'm I'm a firm believer that we cannot continue as we are right now, and we need radical thinking. And I have an idea which I'm going to run by you. And I'd love to know whether you think this actually makes sense and would work and it would actually save the government a lot of money. So let's start off with the first point. Now, how does the state pension work? Now, the state pension is something that you basically get. You need 35 years of qualifying national insurance contribution years to get your full state pension. So what I mean by that is you pay national insurance contributions and you have to, during your working career, have paid national insurance contributions for 35 years to get the full state pension. The full state pension amount is right here. Okay. Now, if you didn't get the full 35 years in national insurance contributions, you will still get an element of the state pension, but you're not going to get the full amount. Now, currently the state pension equals around about £9,000 per year per person who retires. And the retirement age effectively has been pushed back uh, quite a bit over the last few years. I mean, you could access it when you were 55. Now, for most people, it's going to be 68, 66. And so, why is that? It's because ultimately when the state pension was introduced, people would retire when they were 55 and their life expectancy was relatively short. People are living much, much longer now. And so it means that if you have a retiree who take, starts to take, take the state pension at, say, age 65, there is a big possibility that that person is going to live until, you know, 80, 85, maybe even 90, which means that the state has to cater to this person for 20 years, 20 years plus. And the reality of it is that the government is unable to sustain this kind of funding. Now, for those of you who don't want to understand how the, the state pension works, this is how I describe it. Picture an ATM. Now, in this ATM, you're going to have a queue of people waiting to use this ATM, taking money out. Those are people on state pension right now. So the ATM is the state pension. Those taking money out of the ATM are state pensions right now who have you know, retired, who have worked all their lives. They've got their 35 years national insurance contributions. It's now time for them to enjoy their state pension. But as you can probably imagine, an ATM needs to be replenished. And so at the other side of the ATM, you essentially have a cure people depositing money into this ATM to be taken up by those who retire. The people putting into this ATM are you and me, taxpayers right now. And this is the first thing about the state pension that a lot of people don't realize. The state pension is not a pot of money that is sat around that has been invested over a number of years to generate an income for those people who are retiring right now. It's actually being funded by the tax take. So as we enter into recessionary periods where people may, necessarily, may not necessarily be working because they've lost jobs, that actually impacts the money that is available to the government to pay as a state pension. Now, the state pension is a large portion of what the government basically deems as the welfare cost, the welfare ticket. This right here is a visual representation. This state pension every single year cost the government £111 billion. It's a big, big 
number. So that has to come off the tax take. And this really leads us to the cost to the government. Every single year, and again, people are living much, much longer. And as people live longer and more people join the queue to take money out of this ATM, you're relying on people falling off the queue at the back end, essentially dying in order for you to keep that pension bill down. And then this brings me into the foreshadowing stuff, because ultimately, if, if, if we carry on like this, state pension is going to become unsustainable, particularly when people haven't necessarily invested in personal pensions or workplace pensions in order to give themselves the ability to cater for on their own for their retirement needs. And this brings us into things like auto enrollment. So if you if you work for your own, for your employer right now, they have to make a contribution into your pension pot. They have to contribute 3%, you have to contribute 5%. That was made law in the last 10 years that it was compulsory for your employer to pay into your pension on your behalf. Now, some employees will have something called a matching scheme. And this is something I always talk about when I you know, talk about pensions or do a live session. A matching scheme is this idea that they have to pay in 3%, you have to pay in 5%. But if you pay in 10%, they will also pay in 10% to match you. And for many people who are in a workplace scheme right now, that is a no brainer because essentially it is free money that you're saying no to if you don't ask the question of whether there is a matching scheme in your workplace and you're not taking advantage of that max matching scheme within your workplace. But the foreshadowing around auto enrollment and the role that it's basically played is absolutely huge. We've seen more people get involved, more people pay into workplace pensions. And due to you know YouTube and social media, people are more aware now of private pension provisions and paying into a private pension. The uptick is way, way higher than it was you know 15 years ago, which is good news. And that really leads us on to this, this foreshadowing, this this idea that the state pension isn't going to be around for much longer. Why? Because the provision has already been made and the government, when they outlined auto enrollment, the main goal of, of it was to ensure that people were taking responsibility for their retirement journey. So now that we've got that covered, I want to talk about radical thinking, because I think if the state pension is going to get scrapped and it's going to take a bold government, a bold prime minister to actually make that decision, but it is unsustainable, I personally think that we need radical thinking in devising a new way for people to be able to have a pension provision which is going to work for them. But what would happen if we were so bold and so brave to say, for every child born, we will give them £10,000 at birth, and this £10,000 will be invested for 60 years, taking advantage of compound interest, and that will be used to basically fund a portion of their retirement. I've actually done some numbers for you. Let me share my screen and just talk up through the numbers and what that would actually mean. Now, £10,000 given at birth to every single child, right? Now, let's just assume you were able to achieve a 6% return every single year. Let's be quite moderate and cautious in this projection. 6% for 60 years, you compound yearly, and there are no monthly contributions, okay? So just the £10,000 going in. Let's calculate this and see what the number basically comes out at. It's £329,000 that this pot would actually be worth in 60 years' time, which is a damn sight more than what a lot of people currently have in their pension pot. The average pension pot in the UK is worth £56,000 according to data. So this is by some way, way over the average UK pension pot right now, £329,000. Now, this is assuming that no contributions are made at all during that lifetime. Now, let's just assume, for example, you make contributions into a workplace pension whilst you're, you, you're doing this, which you would do anyway. And let's just assume that the average amount that you paid into your pension during that period of time was £10,000. Let's recalculate this. We were looking at £329,000 beforehand. Now we're looking close to a million pounds, £987,000. This is early investment into a child at a young age for retirement benefit into the future. I'd love you to tell me whether you think that this is a good idea and something that I guess the government needs to have a look at in terms of a different way to fund retirement, because this is going to cost less than 111 billion pounds that is required for the government to sustain the state pension, the state pension right now. And it's going to remove the tax burden requirements as well 
for future generations. The issue that we have here is that with radical thinking, we need a new change of system. How this will be implemented in terms of the uh, logistics around it? At what point do you cut off the state pension for, for, for a certain generation? These are all unpopular things. I'm not a politician. I'm not working in that field, and thank God, because it is a minefield to try and unpick. But I think that this is a novel, great idea that could potentially work to give people, I guess, security and give people a sense of control over their own retirement with a hand in from the government from birth to help. May not be a perfect solution, but I'd love to know what you think might also be another solution that could work in this instance. There we go.